So good morning, everyone. Um, and uh, my name is Nigel Gim. If you don't know what I do, I'm the lead training program director for the St. Mary's Scheme. I'm also an accredited RCA trainer for HEE London. I thought I'd run a few um, audio podcasts and interviews with successful candidates who've recently passed the RCA, smashed the RCA in the March sitting. Um, and I'm just so happy to have uh, Obi on uh, this morning. Uh, so Obi, someone that uh, um, I've been mentoring and uh, specifically so happy that she's actually smashed the RCA finally. Good morning, Obi. Hello, how are you? Hello, good morning, Nigel. Happy to have so you. So firstly, today. congratulations. Really, really happy that you got the result that you wanted. Um, I know you've got quite an interesting narrative around this exam, and I thought maybe that we could maybe just start there with regards to some of the challenges that you found with regards to the RCA. Um, I mean, one of the biggest challenge for me was the fact that it's still a relatively new exam yes. and um, everyone was maybe potentially still very clueless as to what exactly is expected. And I think the other challenge, apart from it being new, is the rules were constantly changing. Yes. You know, so um, RCGP was constantly updating their website. And obviously, there were lots of RCGP courses. Mm. And obviously, you can't attend all the courses, but every time a colleague goes for a new or a more recent RCGP course, there's always another new information that is yeah. perhaps sometimes not explicitly stated on the website, you know. Right. You know, yes. So just the new information, new exam, everything constantly changing. Yeah, I think that I found that really difficult. Yeah. In yeah. terms of so the, definitely... Uh, uh, you know, a big piece of advice is, you know, for those sitting in the autumn, really, really important that you keep an eye on the RCGP website and the information that's updated. And obviously we update it on our course also. Okay. Obviously you were very successful in this last attempt, um, having had, and I think many people uh, will have found this very difficult, you know, maybe missing the exam just by a couple of marks and you did very, very well this time around. Mm -hmm. What do you think was the game changer for you? What, what, what changed with this attempt? Um, I, I think, for me, the biggest one this time around was um, changing to video. Right. Uh, my previous exams were maybe 90% or 100% um, audios. Okay. And um, this time around, I probably had only one submission that was audio. The rest of it was video. I think that made okay. a difference. Um, yes. I believe as IMGs, there's already the challenge with interpersonal skills because you're, of your poor language. Um, mm. Um, skills and um, yeah. obviously English is not my first language so mm. there are lots of British lingo that probably don't come naturally for me mm. you know? I mean when patients make awkward comments or make a joke even when you're talking about something serious like cancer I find that yes. a bit awkward you yes. know and on the telephone it can be difficult to yes. respond to that without it sounding a bit off you know but on the video I can nod, you know, I can grin, I can smile, depending on what the person is saying. Mm. And um, you know how they say we should perhaps um, give feedback to encourage the patient to keep talking. On yes. audio, sometimes it's awkward because you find yourself using perhaps the same learned word every time. And when you listen yeah. to it, it sounds robotic. Right. Or on the video, those sorts of um, cues don't have to be verbal. You can just yeah. nod and potentially that encourages the patient to keep talking or it's obvious to everyone that you're actually listening, you know, and thinking about what the patient is, is saying. So I think the videos made a huge difference. Okay. And then That's I think really the other um, thing I changed was um, my strategy in terms of um, eyes. Um, I think on my very first exam, some of the feedback I got was that it was quite robotic. Mm. Um, I know I'm supposed to do eyes at once, but a lot of the time it comes off sounding very off. Yes. You know? And one way I think I changed that was doing the eyes mainly based off of what the patient is saying. You yeah. know, ideally yeah. I want to do the three ICE together, mm. but um, depending on what the patient says, if it comes out together, fantastic. If it doesn't, mm. I try to create another natural agenda for it to come at another yes. time, yeah. Yes. And um, 
uh, the other bit is potentially using patients that have good um, command of the English language. I mean, I'm already struggling with English. It's yes. it's a lot easier when the other patient speaks well. You know, I don't yes. know how that sounds. And yes. um, that potentially also helps the eyes to come out a bit more naturally. I mean, the typical British patient actually comes with an agenda to the GP. And those are the kind of patients I'm looking for. You know, so when I look at the triage list and they say, chest pain, worried about PE. I want that, mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking for because yes. then I have something to address. It may be PE, maybe not. And it will be opportunity to find out why he thinks it's PE and yes. that sort of conversation. And that helps the eyes to come out naturally as mm -hmm. opposed to making it sound like I've been told to ask for eyes and now I'm going to ask you, what's your eyes? Yes. Well, maybe not yeah. like that. So yeah. yeah, I think those were the two main things, yeah. Fantastic. Okay, and then so the third thing, yeah. Sorry, go go ahead. Ahead. yes, <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely. I, was, I think the video consultations, because you know, we 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 certainly talked about showcasing interpersonal skills through nonverbal cues, which you've highlighted. We've talked obviously about asking ice in context, not overforcing ice, and specifically mm. using a patient's ice. What would be your kind of third game changer? Um, I think the other one will be I kind of avoided some kind of cases. An example would be, I struggle to get chronic cases. And mm -hmm. um, in previous exams, I used things like asthma exacerbation or COPD exacerbation, yes. which can be fantastic if it goes well. But then at the same yeah. time, it can come up as low challenge. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, in my previous exams, I saw, I had a few comments about low challenge. I had a few mm -hmm. comments about inappropriate cases. And because the feedback is not very specific, so I can't exactly tell which cases were low challenge. Mm. Yeah. But looking back, I suppose those were probably the ones I thought was the low challenge. I don't know. And so yes. this time around, I avoided those sort of COPD exacerbation or asthma yeah. for yeah. chronic cases. And um, I think on my last exam, I eventually used a diabetic patient that was yeah. um, poorly controlled and he had a few other things going on i think his mm. ability he was um there, few, there was a complex social background basically yeah. and that yeah. sort of ups the challenge that's and so let's just say this time around i maybe put myself in a more difficult situation by looking for high challenge um, yes. cases and okay. um i know that sometimes that can perhaps come back to bite you if it turns out to be too mm. challenging you know sure but sure. um i definitely avoided the exacerbations yeah 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 because i think sometimes just with the exacerbations if you're just simply adding in a medication then actually it's mm. not going to be challenging enough and i think what you've highlighted here mm. and we've talked about this haven't we that when we look at a case you really need to look at both challenge and angle and so mm. if a patient's got complex psychosocial uh, factors in the background if a patient's got a very set agenda that's definitely going to increase the challenge of the case but that does take time doesn't it in terms of case yeah. selection so just kind of wrapping up Obi again so happy to uh, have your advice for our um, fellow STs who are going to be appearing for the exam but obviously there'll be some STs there who are feeling a bit down um, kind of having been stung uh, in the March sitting and obviously now have to wait till autumn um, what's your kind of final piece of advice uh, for these STs who are going into the autumn sitting well, um, I think I would say it's 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 doable. Um, I mean, I finally passed it on my third attempt. And um, I think I would suggest that you start early. Um, I think this is mainly um, for the international medical graduates like myself or people mm. who English is not their first language. I mean, this exam made me realize that English is not my first language. So um, I expect to perhaps work harder than the typical um, UK grad. And um, what that means is starting earlier than usual. Um, if the British, um, I, I believe a UK graduate can start ST3 in August and sit the exam yes. in September and smash the exams. Mm. But for you, you need to perhaps give yourself time to understand what your own peculiar circumstances are or your own peculiar challenges. Um, initially, I noticed that my accent was a bit of an issue for some of my patients, and um, I learned to 
start talking a bit more slower, not too slow, yeah. but slow enough so that I don't have them pausing to say, what did you say randomly yeah. throughout the consultation because that it's um, some of my time. So I think starting early helps you to identify what your peculiar challenges are, helps you to also start recording early and um, see some lingo that sound off. Like so we don't, we all have mannerisms that you use without realizing it. And if you don't yeah. start early, you will not know that those um, situations are what you potentially struggle with. And um, the other thing that I think is really, really useful is meeting with other trainees that are in the same stage of the exam, like record, recording for ROCA actively. And, um, and you can potentially incorporate it into the VTS scheme. Um, yes. I realized that listening to other, um, other um, colleagues recording helped me to um, identify potential ROCA cases because mm -hmm. that's one of the things I struggled with as well. I couldn't, you know how they say some cases are not very good for ROCA and I would have told myself, mm -hmm. oh, I, like for example, I submitted um, a sleep apnea case. I would not have thought that that was a potentially good case that I can look for, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, having listened to another colleague do it very well, I'm like, okay, I can try this, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I definitely picked up a few um, mannerisms or um, phrases from listening to um, other colleagues um, consultations yeah so that, that that's really very useful yeah okay that's fantastic well look thank you so much and again um, congratulations on your amazing RCA success I wish you all the best with your career moving forwards and um, do take care of yourself Obi. all right thank, thank, you. thank you bye so thanks once again to Obi for uh, sharing her thoughts. Just to reiterate, with regards um, sharing of uh, recordings, uh, that can be undertaken um, on the same VTS as long as there's an accredited uh, RCA uh, educator present. Um, but unfortunately, recordings can't be shared obviously outside of uh, VTS. And um, uh, you must make sure that you obviously abide by the RCGP uh, regulations around that. Um, so just a few uh, short uh, slides just on what we can do to try and help you. Um, if you've been stung by this, don't lose hope. There's definitely things um, that can be done and strategy that can be undertaken for your next submission. Uh, do feel free to have a look at the website for the courses. Uh, we have a new demo masterclass course where I'll be showcasing uh, previous uh, RCA case submissions through simulation, successful RCA simulations. We also have a, a full day flagship course where we can um, help you with targeted simulation and improve your consultation skills specifically to hit those RCA competencies. Um, I've got a lot of online resources. I've got a strategy webinar, which specifically looks at case selection and case marking and also a bank of face-to-face -face RCA simulations. And I offer one-to-one -one mentoring. Um, if AKT is something that you are um, preparing for, I can also help you with that with full day flagship courses, half day stats courses and online lectures. Feel free to contact me at any point, mrcgpcourses at yahoo.com. My number's there uh, on the slide. Uh, the website is mentalmededucation.com and you can also subscribe to that. So thank you so much for tuning in. I um, hope to get another podcast up soon um, and don't give up. You know, there's always, always hope. All right. Take care. Have a great weekend. Bye now.